Okay, so this is how you prepare the table for the continuous double indicator titration. You prepare two separate tables, one for phenolphthalein and the other for methyl orange. You realize in our first titration, we began with 0, 0.00, and our endpoint was realized at 5.30. Then, we continued by adding three drops of methyl orange, and we ended up at a tighter value of 21.10. Here, there are two things you could do. You could either make this 5.30 your initial over here, or do what I'm going to do. Write your initial as 0 0.00, the same initial as this one. Because we are considering the whole titration as just one set of titration. Just that it is made up of two components, the phenolphthalein and the methyl orange titrations. But it's still one titration. We just continued. So we are going to make both initials to be what? Zero. At the end of the day, to calculate the volume of acid required for the metal orange titration, we just have to subtract this one from this one over here. I hope you get it. But you can choose to still use 5.30 as your initial over here, which is also correct. But I am preferring to use 0, 0.00 as initial for both phenolphthalein and the metal orange titrations. And when I'm doing my calculation, I'll make sure I subtract the tighter value over here in the phenolphthalein titration from that of the metal orange titration in order to get the average volume of acid that I needed to neutralize the base using metal orange as my indicator. Then I performed the second titration. That one too, I started from 0.00. .00 and I had a tighter value over here in the phenolphthalein titration to be 5.00. And in the metal orange, 21.00. For, so for the third experiment, we did that one not on camera. And we started with 0, 0.00. And we had this part for the phenolphthalein titration to be 5.10. Then we added three drops of the metal orange indicator. We continued and we ended at 21.10. Now the difference between the final and the initial titer values is going to give us our titer. So 5.3 minus 0, 0.00 will give us 5.30. Similarly, 5.00 minus 0, 0.00 will give us 5.00, and that one will give us 5.10. In the metal orange titration as well, you realize the final minus the initial will give us our titer. So we had 21.00, sorry, 21.10, 21. 21.00, then 21.10. Now, these are the values we had for our titration. We will look for the average titer from the phenolphthalein titration. Then we'll look for the average titer also from the metal orange titration. But to look for the average titer, we are looking for any two titer values that are consistent. Consistent means they do not differ by more than plus or minus 0 0.20. So just imagine we are using 5.30 and 5.00. The difference is 0 0.30. So these two values could be used, but they wouldn't be consistent. If you are to use 5.30 and 5.10, the difference is 0 0.20. They are consistent. But I'm choosing the ones that are more consistent. 
So I'm going to pick 5.00 and 5.10 and divide it by 2 to get the average. So my average will give me 5.05 centimeters cube. That will be my average titer for the phenophthalene titration. Let's move on to the methyl orange titration. That one too, I have some values over here. I have 21.10, 21.00, 21.10. Now over there, you can use any two values because they are all consistent. If you use these two values, they are consistent. These two values, they are consistent. These two values, they are still consistent. So you choose whichever you want to use. But for my titration, I assume the first one to be a rough titration. And the second and the third one became the more serious ones. But you realize that uh, the values are so close to each other, which means even the rough titration wasn't so rough as I thought. So I could choose to use these two values because they are the closest. They have differences, 0.00. .00. So I am choosing the second and the third values. So mine will be 21.00 plus 21.10 all on two. And that'll give me 21.05 centimeters cube. And I'm choosing that because I considered my first titration to be a rough one. But I took my time to perform the second and the third ones. So I am taking the second and the third ones more seriously. But if this third one could have given, uh, had given me a crazier value, like 21.50, then I, I should have resorted to these two values because they would have been consistent. So I have my average titer for my phenolphthalein titration and the average titer for my metal orange titration. Now, with these values, how do I find the concentration of sodium carbonate in the mixture? The concentration of sodium bicarbonate in the mixture. The mass of sodium carbonate in the mixture. The mass of sodium bicarbonate in the mixture. In our next video, we'll talk about the calculations involved in continuous double indicator titration. Thank you.